Fourth oral question, Viscount Stansgate. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the United Kingdom is working very closely with our allies and partners in our continuing condemnation of the actions of Russia and Mr Putin for their reprehensible attack on Ukraine. We have worked very closely with the United States and the Foreign Secretary visited last week to further coordinate our support for Ukraine. We have also engaged uh, directly with China and have been clear that China must also stand up for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and not condone Mr Putin's actions. My Lords, I thank the Minister for that answer. Would he agree that the geopolitics of the world in which we live are being changed by the unjustified war and invasion of Ukraine? And would he further agree that the Chinese are clearly uneasy about the way in which the situation is developing? Yeah. Therefore, as a permanent member of the Security Council of the United Nations, can not the British government take an initiative to work with the Chinese and the Americans to try to secure, for example, humanitarian corridors to enable aid to go in and people to come out safely? And will the government not try to uh, promote these actively with all our partners, because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. My Lords, I agree uh, with the Noble High Count on both points, um, and I assure Noble High Count we are working uh, very closely uh, with the Chinese, amongst other uh, countries as well. My right hon. Friend, the Foreign Secretary, spoke with her Chinese counterpart, Foreign Minister and State Councillor Wang Yi, on the Friday, the 25th of February, and in that, my right hon. Friend underlined the UK's expectation on China's role on the current crisis and, of course, as we've heard, its important role within the multilateral system and we are engaging at all levels, officially and, as I've said, at ministerial level. In terms of all other member states, as was demonstrated in the UN uh, General Assembly vote where 141 nations came together, it demonstrably showed how working with key partners and, indeed, other countries, um, it's important that we are universal in our con condemnation of the Russian war on Ukraine. My, my, my Lord, there's a lot in what uh, the noble Viscount Lord uh, uh, Stansgate says. And are we, in our discussion to the Americans, urging them to um, pump more and export more oil, as we're urging the Saudis to do, and as indeed the Chinese are also urging the Saudis to do? And in uh, following this path, can we explain, could ministers explain more clearly to the public that while we're all in favour of long term energy? transformation away from fossil fuels. In the short term, these measures are necessary, not only to put a squeeze on Russia over Ukraine, but also to avoid the hideous spikes in prices and energy costs, which at present are causing so much suffering to many people, particularly the most vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I agree with my noble friend, and that is why my right hon. friend, the Prime Minister, visited the Middle East because the immediate issue is one of energy security and ensuring a total move away from reliance on Russian energy and indeed uh, Russian gas in terms of the whole world. Indeed, there are countries who are heavily reliant on Russian gas. We applaud, obviously, the decisions taken by the likes of Germany recently uh, in their decision on Nord Stream 2 and their pausing of that particular project. But equally, I think we are seeing very strong collaboration and collective action on ensuring that from a global community point of view, but also for our own citizens, the issue of energy security remains a key priority. The position of China and India is of course concerned to UK interests. Has the government signalled to China that any preferential market access to UK financial services will be questioned? Uh, and with regards to India, uh, the UK is in discussions about a free trade agreement, but it is reported today that India is in discussion with Russia for a rupee-ruble trading arrangement which will circumvent the sanctions uh, restrictions. The uh, head of the export organization for India said other nations are banning exports to Russia, so it's a good time for Indian exporters to enter into the Russian market. Does the minister believe that this is disagreeable, that the UK will be offering preferential market access to the very financiers? that are circumventing our restrictions. My Lords, first of all, on the issue of China, we have been very clear that if China wants to be seen as a responsible global act, uh, actor, they need to take concrete steps to show that China in no way condones Russian's actions, and it alludes to also providing alternatives 
in terms of market access. On the issue of India, India is a key strategic partner. Um, we are building strong alliances with India. We are having very clear uh, discussions with India on India's role, both in uh, conflict resolution, but also the long-term situation pertaining to Ukraine. You, and I know the Indian Foreign Minister has engaged directly with both um, Ukraine and Russia. On the issue of the report he alludes to, I, let's wait for formal announcements. I don't want to comment on particular speculation. Does, oh, Lord. Well, Go on. <laughs> Does the noble Lord, the Minister, uh, assess that the Chinese understand that more than just the United Kingdom's relations with Russia are in question right now? Essentially, it is not possible for a country, especially a big country, to be neutral in the face of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So if China is not clearly part of the opposition, we shall have to reassess our relations with China too. Noble Lord again points to an important role, and as the Noble Lord himself will know, that China is not just a, another player, it's a key player on the global stage. And it's, it's not the same as Russia. China still wants to be seen as a responsible global actor, whereas Russia have launched an unprovoked and premeditated attack against so a sovereign democratic state. I think also the fact, as I've said before, that uh, China did abstain in the key Security Council resolution also shows quite directly about China's concern on the current war in Ukraine. Can I just return to the point about multilateralism? And of course, our support for President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine must be uh, complete. And that also means that his positive noises that President Zelensky is making about the talks with Russia, that we need to support him with those as well. So what is the noble lord and the government doing to ensure that we can back President Zelensky in those talks and that we take the outcome of those talks to the multilateral institutions and we gain the support of China and others for those progress so that we can bring this horrible war to an end? Right, what the noble lord's final comment, I think we all want to see that. We want to see this war which has gone on now for many days and many weeks, and we see increasing attacks and indeed indiscriminate attacks on the Ukrainian people, calls for the need for peace and conflict resolution. And of course, we back all current initiatives which are underway in terms of seeking uh, a resolution. Ukraine is a sovereign nation. It must lead on it. But I assure the noble lord, the prime minister is in daily contact with President Zelensky and fully abreast of the initiatives and where the current progress is. Russia can stop this in an instant. And that's where the pressure should come. That's, it needs to stop and then pull back. No preconditions in terms of where we go with this, but Ukraine must lead and, of course, will support, support President Zelensky in his peace efforts. My lords, my lords, my lords, my lords, my lords, my lords is it not particularly sad for us that India, the greatest democracy in size, a crucially important member of the Commonwealth, is taking the abstaining line in the UN. Is not this something we ought to be endeavouring with every diplomatic effort to ensure that India comes on side as a democracy should? My Lord, sir, I am the minister responsible for our relations with India and I can assure my noble friend that we are having very constructive engagement with India on the issue of the Ukrainian war, and India also recognises its important role. Of course, it has a strong um, historic relationship with Russia, but it also recognises that what has happened is an uh, unprovoked attack on a sovereign state, and it's important, as my noble friend said, all democracies around the world call for an immediate ceasefire, but Im immediately after that is ensuring that the territorial sovereignty and integrity of Ukraine is fully protected. My lords, my lords, my lords, on that very issue of the, the territorial integrity of Ukraine, I was pleased to see that yesterday the FCDO's update included in its very first point a reference to the peace talks and to President Zelensky's demand that the world gives his country ongoing, guaranteed, legally enforceable security yeah. for its borders. 
And it's not surprising that it does, because the Budapest Memorandum pro proved worthless and unenforceable. The Minsk agreements were, were unenforceable and unimplementable, and deterrence has failed him. It is only serving the purposes of the bloody aggressor who is stopping us from putting in the skies some safety for the people of Ukraine. So we should now be turning our attention to how the future of Ukraine, when it is eventually negotiated, negotiated as it will have to be, can be guaranteed. And the international cooperation we have on, economic, on, on, on economics and, and, and sanctions forms the basis of that. We should be working on that now to reinforce Zelensky's position in these negotiations. My Lord, in response to the noble Lord, he'll be aware that the United Kingdom uh, has a very strong relationship with Ukraine, which doesn't just date back to the start of this R Russian uh, war of choice, but it's very much something that's long-standing, and we've been providing defensive support to Ukraine since the annexation of Crimea. And defence continues to play an important central role in the UK's response to the Russian invasion. Equally, the point he says on sanctions, etc., it's not about now. We've already begun this work. It's multifaceted, and the important thing is we're working in unison with our key partners.